Praise the Lord, everybody. Uh, this is uh, Ben Cruz from Christ Alive Community Apostolic Church from the city of Corcoran. And um, I'm broadcasting from my house. Uh, this is a post-broadcast uh, lesson here today. This is for our Wednesday night service on May 13th. And um, the topic today is attitude is everything. Attitude is everything. Four main questions we're going to address. What is the definition of attitude? Number two, have you ever had a bad attitude and why? Uh, we'll talk about that. Number three, what kind of attitude do you usually have? This is specifically you. And what and why is attitude important? So the definition of attitude is a mental position with regard to a fact or a state of mind. Uh, number two, a feeling or emotion toward a fact or a state of mind. Uh, number three is a negative or hostile state of mind. And the fourth thing is a cocky or arrogant manner. Um, so on her first day of work, Linda was told right off by one of the ladies that worked in the area where she was at that you needed to watch out for this other girl because she's nice to your face, but will make you look bad in a heartbeat when you turn your back. So Linda thought, great, on my first day, I already have to watch my back. Well, this other girl she supposedly had to watch out for never really did anything, and Linda soon realized that there must have been something between the two ladies. It seemed like every other day this girl would leave, and the one who had warned her would start talking about her as soon as she left. And uh, every day it was the same. And no one would say much while the girl with the attitude was present. But as soon as she would walk out the door, the same girl would start talking smack. And soon after, everybody started talking and joining in the conversation. Soon, this gal with the attitude was gone and on maternity leave. And, was, uh, and as soon as she was gone, it just seemed like there was nothing else to talk about from the other lady or anybody else that was in the room. So it seems like on the face value that her attitude, that one with that bad attitude, changed the whole atmosphere of the workspace. Um, but it also kind of sounds like there was more than one person with an attitude problem in this scenario. The attitude we carry is very important. When people see us, who should they see? Uh, who do they see? Well, they should see Jesus. If Christ is in you, I hope that you don't have a bad attitude everywhere you go. If we're always having a bad attitude, people won't see who we want them to see. We may say, well, I'm a good person. Um, well, prove it. Um, you got to smile. You got to be personable. Bible says uh, he that has friends will make himself friendly, make himself available. Talk to people. Don't look at everybody with a scowl. You might be in deep thought, but be aware of what you are portraying to somebody else because it might give somebody a perception that you've got a bad attitude. Um, and so uh, when if we have Jesus on the inside, working on the outside, what kind of attitude should people see? This is a very important question and topic I believe we need to discuss a little more often because what people see, the perception, if we're the living epistles read of all men, as the Apostle Paul declares, uh, if we are the example of who Jesus is in our life, then our actions are very important. And we need to really process the things that come in our mind and filter them out before they come out of our mouths, before it's in our posture, before we get an attitude. Uh, we've got to check ourselves. We've got to check our spirit before we just lash out, before we just open up and let her rip, before we just uh, go ahead and just go with the gusto and just do whatever's on the top of our mind and whatever we feel is on our heart and let the tip of our tongues just roll out with whatever comes out, uh, that usually doesn't end up very well and usually causes people to have hurt feelings or make people think, well, if that's what their walk with Christ is like, 
I'm not interested. If that's what their church is all about, no thank you, I'm okay. Well, even though that's the wrong attitude to look at it, even though in their perception from somebody that may be correct, it is an incorrect statement because the person portraying the bad attitude was in the error of their ways and they need to recognize everything about what they're doing. When we put this consciousness of checking ourselves, having a Christ-minded attitude, being Christian, being Christ-like is a lifestyle. It's not a moment. It's not walking into a church building. It's not just getting in your car and, and, and going to meet up with somebody from the church family. It's, it's more than just hanging around from the brothers and sisters in Christ. Because when you go away or when you go to the store, or when you go to school or whatever it is that you're going to do and you're going to have contact uh, with the public, how we portray better be just as good or better when we're in the church house as when we're in the public. If we, we were to run comparisons, we need to be consistent all the way through in our life. Uh, do we have ups and downs? Absolutely. Uh, do we have troubles? Absolutely. But just because you have trouble doesn't mean everybody else has trouble at that point in time. So as we keep this in mind, we're going to realize that my troubles are mine only and we don't need to share my troubles with anybody else. So when we come in contact with people and we make that face to face or we see somebody, we may not always smile, but you can be cordial, say hi, how are you doing? Hey, listen, um, I'm not feeling that great right now. I, I hope you don't mind, but I I've got to get going. You know what? It's not a brush off. It's just it's avoiding going down a path that we don't want to portray because we want people to see Jesus in us. Jesus isn't going to come through our, our clothes and our body and say, hey, regardless of what they're doing, uh, I'm right here, and then get back in the body. It never works that way. Jesus is supposed to be in us, Christ in you, the hope of glory, the hope more than just here on earth. There's a hope coming for us in the future after we pass on from this life on to the next, our heavenly reward. Um, in a text message I sent somebody on Facebook, I, I, I also mentioned that I just can't wait for the Lord to send my, my ticket to heaven so that I can go ahead and go into heaven, but I've got to wait for that ticket to come so I can have a one-way express to heaven, stand before the Lord, be accountable in my life to him, and um, and, and as, as I've lived before the Lord and as I've, I've made my mistakes, my shortcomings, my downfalls, but I've repented, I've done everything I could, and, and I'm standing before God, I want that to be the standing record, there is no way that I'm going to be able to change that record once I get there. I'm not going to explain myself out of any situation. I'm not going to be able to correct myself. What's played out in my life now is going to be played out before the Lord then. All right, so well, we all get a bad attitude sometimes. Um, every now and again, and again, and again, and again, and again, we have to ask ourselves, did we pray today? Did we pray this week? How about this month? How about this year? Please? Think about it. You see, in Philippians chapter 4, verse 11 through 13 tells us, the Apostle Paul, he was in prison and he was saying this. He said, I'm not saying this because I'm in need, for I have learned to be content with whatever the circumstances are. I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in and every situation, whether uh, well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or want. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. The Apostle Paul was saying, hey, I'm, I, I, it's my life that I'm being flexible because I know that this is more than just about me. This is Christ in me. And I have a hope of Christ in me for my future. After this present condition, after this world, I am portraying a life that I'm living for the Lord more than just here and now and today and for the moment. I'm living it for the future. 
See, that's what we're doing. Attitude about what we're doing, how we're doing, why we're doing it, learning about it so that we can make corrective action now in our life and live the life that the Lord is wanting us to live. Though we make mistakes, though we fall short, though we, we fail, though we're not perfect, uh, that is not an excuse not to make personal corrections. Okay, the, the, the pastor, the preacher uh, don't always have to be there to tell you what you're doing, what you're not doing. They don't have a checklist. You know, nobody's Santa Claus. Santa Claus doesn't even exist. Uh, making a list, checking it twice, seeing if you're naughty or nice. Okay, this, this is not a fairy tale world. Nobody's standing over you and saying, well, you did this, you did that. The Lord knows everything. He's there real time. And we'll talk about that in a minute. But the thing is, you need to be real time in your mind and in your heart and attitude towards the things of God. So the scripture comes in handy one day uh, while at work, I was getting really annoyed and I just started rolling my eyes, you know, felt a little, uh, felt a small little voice say, hey, can't let your bad attitude get the best of you. People are watching you. So think of the Apostle Paul. He went through all sorts of tribulations. 2 Corinthians 11, verse 24 through 27 begins to tell us this account. He gave us the really short version, the Reader's Digest version of the story. He said, three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned, uh, killed or stoned with stones. Uh, three times I was shipwrecked. Once I spoke, uh, spent a whole night and day adrift in the sea. I traveled among many long journeys. I faced danger from rivers and robbers. I faced danger from my own people, the Jews, as well as from the Gentiles. I faced danger in the cities and dangers in the deserts and danger out in the seas. I faced danger from men who claimed to be believers who weren't. I, pl I have worked hard and long and during many sleepless nights. I've been hungry and thirsty and I've often gone without food. I shivered with the cold and even without enough clothing to keep me warm. And Paul didn't necessarily like or agree what happened to him, but he could still be content in his circumstances, uh, meaning that in his spiritual contentment, the, con the, the uh, contentment doesn't come from people, places, things, situations, or circumstances, but contentment comes from the personal satisfaction and reassurance that even though it doesn't feel good right now. I know that when I put my trust in the Lord, everything is going to be all right. And so James said to count it all joy. What? I've never been beaten. I've been, never been stoned. I mean, I'm not talking about the Stoners Club or Cannabis Anonymous or anything like that. But I've never been shipwrecked. Uh, I, I, so I guess I can't, I, I could have a bad, better attitude in my petty little circumstances. You see, since we're in Bible study mode, I want to talk and take a look at others in the Bible who, whose attitudes played a big part in their lives. Does anyone have any Bible characters in mind? Think about it right now. Whose Bible characters, which Bible characters can you think of that could have and justifiably seemingly was okay to have a bad attitude? Well, let's talk about Saul king of Israel. When David came into the picture, he didn't seem too worried until David killed Goliath. Then the trouble seemed to start. So let's go down this path in 1 Samuel chapter 18, verse number 6. And when the victorious Israelite army was returning home uh, after David had killed the Philistine um, uh, giant Goliath, women from all the towns of Israel came out to meet King Saul. They sang and danced for joy with tambourines and cymbals of what he was used to, and he liked it. And, and 1 Samuel 18 and verse 7, and they continued, and this was the lady's song. They said, Saul has killed his thousands, but David killed his ten thousands. Now, hold on a second. David only killed Goliath, but it was magnified because it brought great victory to Israel. And David was magnified before all the people. You see, God blessed that situation. God blessed that scenario. And Saul felt belittled. He felt betrayed by the people. And now jealousy started to set in. And he began to feel a little, I don't like that situation going on. His attitude began to change. And it was... 
uh, on between David and Saul at the, after that point. Saul had a terrible attitude towards David. And it tried and even tried to kill David, tried to get rid of his problem. Well, David seemed like that was his problem, but the problem was inside Saul's heart and his mind because his attitude portrayed it. That was the real problem. We can't blame other people for our problems. We've got to take a look on the inside. If we're the problem, we need to correct it. If we're not the problem, there's nothing you can do to fix it anyway. And so we have to do what we have to do is we have to take a look at what Saul hap happened with Saul. And Saul not only had a bad attitude towards David, but it seems like he even got a bad attitude towards God. And eventually, his bad attitude got Saul killed. He was went out to the battle of the kings, and not only did it affect him. But it affected his five sons that would have been king and never became king. All because Saul got killed and his sons got killed with him. You see what an attitude can do to affect not only you, but your family and generations uh, ahead. It could take care of things in a positive way, but it can also destroy things that could have been a good thing. We have to keep in mind that uh, the five kings that never were were Saul's sons. And eventually the kingdom went to David as it was prophesied. But I, I believe the Lord knew that Saul's shortcomings and his downfalls were him and not anybody else. You see, Saul's bad attitude took him very down a very dark road and he even blamed God and the things of God and ignored everything because he got a bad attitude. Bitterness will kill. Have you ever been mad or upset uh, at someone because, oh, I can't even remember why, but it must have been bad. So that's why I don't like them. What a terrible thing to hold a grudge for something you can't even remember the details about. If it's been that long and if it was that long ago, it's time to bury the hatchet and let it go. We always say, oh, it's under the blood or I'm going to forgive, but I'm not going to forget. That attitude is going to prevent you from getting the victory and overcome obstacles and temptations that come at you because of a wrong attitude. What's worse is that people will quit living for God because someone offended them. Did you just hear me what I just said? People quit living for God. God that never hurt them always blessed them because of their faithfulness. And people turn their backs on the Lord and quit living for God because God didn't do nothing to them, but somebody else did. And now they turn their backs on everybody, the church, God, everything. You see, perception has a big factor in all of this. People justify, well, if that's, they offended me, they're from church or whatever, and I'm not going to ever go to church ever again. God's going to have to kill them or take care of them before I ever set foot in that church ever again. There's warning signs. The, 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 the sirens are blaring. Amen. The, the flags are waving. That's a signal that there's an attitude problem on the inside. And so too often we forget that Jesus is everywhere. We're putting too much focus on the creation rather than the creator. And don't lift up somebody so high that if they falter or fail or show their humanity, that all of a sudden it impacts you and all of a sudden you get weak in the knees and backslide because of this person you had in high regards and all of a sudden they made a mistake or they said something that was kind of offensive and all of a sudden, oh, I'm not going to live for God if, if this is always going to be like this and I'm going to quit. It, it, it was the wrong attitude. It just almost seemed like somebody's waiting for an excuse to give up anyway. So we've got to check ourselves Remember that Jesus is everywhere. If the Lord was physically sitting next to you today or tomorrow, day in, day out, what would your attitude be like? How about what would your attitude be like if you were upset? How about when you're on a date? 
when you're talking to someone, when you don't always see eye to eye with. All of this brings to memory when we think about how Jesus was with his disciples, he called them his friends. And even though he knew one of them was going to betray him and the other one was going to deny him, Jesus never acted crazy with Judas and, and he even knew who Judas really was. He didn't call out Peter. Hey, you traitor, you backstabber. He didn't call him out. As a matter of fact, after this whole scenario where Peter denied Jesus, Jesus found him, went looking for him. And he said, Peter, if you love me, feed my sheep. You see, Jesus is a loving, kind, merciful savior. That's the attitude that we need to attach ourselves to, that we need to look to hold on to, to portray, to show the love of Christ working through us. Love in itself never fails because God is love. And if we have the love of God in us, we need to show and share that love of God that is merciful, that is forgiving, that is kind, even though somebody may be offended at us or even though somebody may have done something to us. Be the bigger man. Be the bigger woman. And just, just push through the situation. You may not be on talking terms with somebody. It just may not be the right opportunity or time, or they may want to tell you off or tell you something. Just maintain a good attitude and say, all right, well, God bless you. Talk to you later. And you don't have to like it. But when you show you're that, you're that bigger person, you show that humility in your attitude, you will come out as the winner. You will come out on top every time. <clears throat> I'll tell you a story of a confrontation that I had. And uh, things don't always go well, but things weren't as bad as it could have been. And had a confrontation uh, with a brother in Christ. And I said some things that was mistaken for something wrong. And I don't believe I did anything wrong, but I apologized anyway. And I, I did, I was sincere. And even though in my heart, I didn't feel like I did anything wrong and I didn't disrespect anybody. I apologized for the way they felt. And I apologized for the way what I did made them feel. Again, I averted a whole situation. I took care of it. It was diffused, squashed, and I moved on. And later on, I went and found that person and shook their hands, uh, continued to talk to them. And I will say hi, and I will shake their hands at any time. I'll even smile and say, God bless you. Hope you're doing well or whatever. Always a kind gesture good, bad, or indifferent. I want to have the right attitude in me. This is not me. This is not about me. This is about Jesus in me. This is what I wanted to portray. This is what I want to share, not just in a Bible lesson to you, those that are listening out there, but I want to share this as part of my attitude. I want this to be integral in my walk with God. I want this to be the impetus of what people see and know about uh, Ben Cruz every day that he lives. Am I the perfect person? Absolutely not. A am I a horrible person? Absolutely not. I'm not trying to be good or bad. I'm trying to be like Jesus. I want to do my best. And when I do fail, I do make my mistakes. I do uh, repent and I do ask God to forgive me and to correct me and show me his will and his way. But I've got to make that corrective action. Forgiveness, uh, reaching out for forgiveness comes from me. The Lord is the one that forgives. It's up to me to take that forgiven attitude and change my attitude and change the way I do things and to change the way I talk and walk 
and change that over after I've received, after I've asked God to forgive me, he's faithful and just to forgive us. Okay, I've got to accept it as good as gold. The money is in the bank. I'm going to cash that check. I'm going to take it for what it's worth because he promised it. So I know it's going to happen. And so I've got to change my attitude towards those things. And so uh, here we have in the book of Acts chapter 5, the apostles were beaten for preaching Jesus. And as soon as they were released, they rejoiced, not because they were freed, but because they, count, they were counted worthy to suffer the shame for the, for the name of Jesus. Ha! Huh. Their attitude wasn't, why is this happening to me? Skip this. If this is what I'm going to get for preaching, I quit. Well, we may feel like that. But just about everything we do affects others and, and our attitudes affect those around us. And, we're, and if we're all mad and if we bring, about, and if we bring uh, others around us uh, down, uh, we can control, learn to control our attitudes. Uh, we can also bring people up. You see, the Bible says that life and death are in the power of the tongue or death and life are in the power of the tongue. And so what we say, we can have sharp words to cut and destroy, or we can use our tongue to edify, bless, and lift up. So think of a group of friends in a fishing boat on the ocean. Think of this. Picture this in your mind. You're with a group of friends in a fishing boat on the ocean. The group of friends is your life. The fishing boat is circumstances of life. And the ocean is life itself. The ocean swells up and down. And the fishing boat follows the ocean, the waves up and down. Do you blame your friends for the ups and downs of life? Is it your friend's fault that the boat is rocking back and forth? Or is it just circumstances that happen when life happens? So we've got to learn how to control our life or control our attitude. Can we control our circumstances? Sometimes, but not always. Can you always control your friends? No. No, you can't always control your friends. You can't always control life and you can't control every circumstance. But what can you control? Your attitude. You see, truth is, no matter how hard we try, we can only control our attitudes and the friends can change, circumstances can change, life can change, but we still have to focus on the real problem, which is me or you. And have you ever woken up with a song playing through your mind? I always wake up with a good old gospel tune, uh, whether it's, uh, he never promised that the cross would not get heavy uh, or the hill would not be hard to climb. Or we can, we can have, uh, you know, I'm trading my sickness I'm trading my pain. I'm trading my sorrows. I'm trading my shame for the joy of the Lord. And we, we can have all kinds of songs. I have, I have songs, gospel songs playing in my mind all the time. And some days it plays all day long while I'm at work. As soon as I am not focused on something, I hear that song in my mind because that's what I've got myself wrapped around as I'm trying to get my mind on Jesus. And see, when we have our minds on, there's an old song, a chorus, church chorus song that says, get your mind on Jesus, let's have church. Well, if we are the church and I've got my mind on Jesus, then I am living in the church. I am the church. I am being the church. Everywhere I go, Lord, I'm going to let this light shine. Praise the Lord, somebody. And so Psalm 51 and 10, create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit in me. Talk about a change of attitude. We need to have that attitude of gratitude. But we also have that attitude of submissiveness. We've got to have that attitude of, God, it can't be about me. No matter how much we want to blow up or get angry at people because of the things aren't going my way. I think about the different ones in the Bible whose lives went crazy on them, yet they maintained a good attitude. So Job lost everything and, it was in, and he was in constant pain. But his attitude towards God remained right, even though when his wife told him to curse God and die, 
He understood that the things that happen to us in life are to strengthen us and not to harm us. It's just easier to get mad and vent uh, or whatever than just to be cool-headed about it. You see, when we truly allow the Lord to step into our lives with the power and the anointing of the Holy Ghost, we have the power to have a good attitude. Really what it comes down to. Our attitude is everything. That's our lesson today on attitude is everything because it's going to affect your walk, your talk, your life, your family, your loved ones, your friends, your coworkers, everybody around, your schoolmates, everybody, everywhere you go, the community, the county, the state. People say, I, I hate this state, but they never leave. People say, I hate Corcoran, but they don't move. Okay, so then we've got to have a change of attitude about us. Some people that are trying to recover from drugs and alcohol want to move away as far away as they can because they know the people that are around them. But, are, but no sooner said than done. Give them a few months. They come out of hiding. They quit locking themselves up in the rooms and, and tired of everything. It won't be very long before they find the wrong crowd all over again. Why? Is it because trouble just knows how to find its way to you? No. Is it because uh, people people just say, hey, you're a stranger, so you, something must be wrong with you, so we're going to come around? No. You see, it's our attitude. You can't run from your skin or hide from your shadow. And so it's got to start with you. you got to have the right attitude because attitude is everything. This is Pastor Ben Cruz from Christ Alive Community Apostolic Church. Love you. Appreciate you. Reach out. Uh, subscribe to our channel on YouTube if you don't, if you haven't already. Like this uh, video if you like it, and leave a comment. And uh, I appreciate everything that uh, everything, all the comments and everybody. If you need something, please reach out to me, and I will be happy to reach back out to you. God bless you. Have a blessed day.